Welcome back to CKP Tronics. Today we're going to be doing a video on a Ford Focus uh, 1.6 TDCI. We have a coolant temperature, sorry, an engine coolant temperature sensor uh, fault, and this will result in your engine running like absolute rubbish because your ECU actually controls or it actually changes how your engine runs or how much fuel is going into the engine depending on what it thinks the coolant temperature is. If it's reading completely uh, erratically, so it's reading 200 degrees, next second it's reading minus 10, your engine will run like crap. And, um, sorry guys, this cover here comes off with two 10 mils. Uh, a, um, a spanner won't get in there, you're gonna have to get an actual socket. You take off them two screws, very easy, it takes about two seconds. You can see there, just slide these off this thing, it's crazy, but anyways, yeah, it could do injectors, but anyways, we're gonna do a coolant temperature sensor, so it's right off the uh, thermostat there. You can see there, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. There's a little plug here that goes into it. All you need is a flat head like this, and you just wedge this backside, and it should pop right off. Uh, I recommend leaving your car I recommend leaving your car to cool down for at least an hour or two just so it's completely cold and there's no pressure built in the actual cooling system. Um, so once that has cooled down, and I actually recommend opening up this cap just to relieve any pressure, uh, that'll, be, that'll protect your hands and it'll just minimize the uh, amount of cooling that just shoots out of this big thing. So what you wanna do is there's a little clip here Right, and in the in the, the new sensor, you can see it's the, that's the same clip. Um, so basically, once you pop that clip off, there will be nothing else holding in this sensor. Maybe just through time, um, it'll be held in. But what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to pop that clip out, just that clip out, nothing else, and then I'm going to resume the, the recording, and I'm just going to show you how you, show how you could take that um, take that sensor out without damaging your thermostat because that would make a small job into a very big job. So give me a minute there guys. Alrighty, we're back there now. So we got this clip out. It's um, clearly been rusted. And I don't know if that's a bit of algae or coolant that's after growing on the bottom of it, but we got a new one anyways. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab just the neck of the connector of this thing and we're gonna give it a wiggle. And you can see there's actually, there, there is wiggle in it. And as I'm, willing, as I'm wiggling it, I'm gonna be pulling back on it, gently. Don't use the plier or anything like that. Just your fingers is fine. And you can see already, the point where the clip was pushing is actually where the body of the coolant temperature sensor is sitting now. So it's proof that it is coming out. And if you want, if you get it far enough, you'll be able to get your flathead in there and wedge. But I really don't recommend that because you could break this clip and uh, that will result in you needing a new uh, thermostat body or just thermostat. So there you go, got it out. It's shooting coolant. So maybe I should have thought this through. But uh, as you can see there, uh, maybe a bottle of coolant is another requirement for this job. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop recording I'm gonna get the seal on this new, uh, this new sensor. Gotta push it in as a replacement of that and try and minimize the amount of coolant that leaks out because the coolant in this is actually fresh and it doesn't need replacing. Um, so give me, give me a minute there, guys. Okay, okay, guys, so we're back here now. Um, I made the major mistake of um, when I pulled out this sensor initially, there was no seal on it, which was like, that's odd, but whatever. So I, I proceeded to put in the other sensor with the seal on this and it wouldn't go in. So I was sitting there like, what the hell is wrong? And when I pulled it out again, the new one, um, I felt the wall and there was two seals in there, which is why it wouldn't fit in there flush. So if you find yourself battling to get that thing in, it shouldn't be hard. Just check if that O-ring is still inside the housing. Um, so obviously doubling up on seals won't let it fit in. But there you go, you can see we have that in. 
same orientation that it was before so this sensor should just on there good um, and then wire actually look kind of frayed mm. we're going to top up the coolant anyways and start the car and we're going to scan the fault code there again and um, if it's not resolved then we'll investigate the wires but that's for another video anyways guys thanks for watching and uh, hope you learned something today and uh, enjoy the video thank you Alrighty, so here I am here accessing the uh, the, the sensor for the uh, cooling temperature sensor and it, as you can see here it's 215 degrees but it's dropping to 43. This was me actually pushing in the frayed cable pu uh, closer to the actual sensor and <laughs> that turned out to be the actual fault and um, the cables going to the actual sensor. So you can see me I'm just trying to wiggle it in a, in a way that, that it holds and it just wouldn't do it what i had to do eventually was uh, snip the two cables get a new connector and solder on a new connector to the sensor you can see here i got it to hold consistently in a way but it's just it wasn't reliable whatsoever and i wouldn't recommend just taping it on because heat would just wreck so